very pleased to present to you fellow Rotarian, Dr. Randy Sumner. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's really a joy here to be here today. I'm going to set this thing for 20 minutes because I know that's what we're at. Um, this is an interesting trip I made, and it, it sort of came about in a very odd way in that I, I really wasn't doing it to go join a trip to Ethiopia with Rotary. Um, and I'm going to go through some of this and how it started. And first I want to say that you just need to be aware you have lots of physicians in this community who are doing the same thing. I'm not the only guy doing this. This is one piece of my life. Ethiopia is, is a complicated country for a lot of reasons. One is it's, it's still recovering from a post-communist state. So a lot of their talent, a lot of their wealth has left and gone all over the world. That's why some of these people are here and they're going back to help their country. Uh, we had dinner with Rotarians, had families that had farms and land. It all been taken away from them. And even though it's not a communist government now, it's never been given back to them. So they have a lot of challenges and that they don't have a lot of the private wealth and initiative they should have. The other issue probably would be that uh, there is a there is a culture I think throughout Africa. The way I understand it is that there is an acceptance of hardship in a way that we would not ever accept it here. I I compare it to seeing the the lion on the prairie stalking the gazelle, and he gets one gazelle, and the rest say, well, he had a bad day, but life goes on. And I, I get a feel sometimes that we were more concerned here about some of the tragedy happening on the corners of Ethiopia than the people in Ethiopia were. And maybe because they don't have enough, they're not able to do much with it. So that's one of the challenges, is actually getting the local resources. And the other challenge is that they're, they're starting to realize they have a lot of their own resources that aren't developed. Um, hydro dams would provide them water and electricity and do a lot of things for them that would help their country move along. And they have to get the money and the engineering and things to get those things done so they'll be self-sufficient. So we're sort of working around the fringes of what they need trying to keep the fires down but the real solution is going to come when they they get their own systems going and they do their own development which which they're trying to do um, I think I think you 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 start to realize the enormity of the conflicts in that area how how conflict is, is part of those countries in a way that we haven't seen in a long, long time. That there's always displacement and refugees and wars and instability and that people moving from country to country trying to find food or shelter. And it, it's impacting, as we saw, it's impacting both ends of Ethiopia. The, the place we went in Asosa now has become the hot, it's the hot spot now. They're, they're having a war in Sudan and they've got refugees coming over to the little village we went to and they aren't vaccinated. They're malnourished, they're trying to vaccinate their own people against disease. So you've got a poor country in the midst of poor countries trying to vaccinate its own you know, people to, get to protect to get them from getting worse from the influx of people that are even worse off. It's a huge challenge. It's just huge.